Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem champagne tower. This is a really interesting one actually. So the idea is that we're pouring liquid. I don't know what it is. Well, I guess it's champagne, but we're pouring it into a glass at the top. There's only going to be a single glass in the first row. There's going to be two glasses in the second row, three in the third row, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can see this picture is really what I would recommend focusing on. So I'm going to blow it up. But but when you have a liquid going in here, at some point, this is going to get full. And the parameters that were given here, the first one is how much liquid are we pouring? It's going to be an integer. If it's one, that means it's enough to fill the first glass. If it's more than one, suppose it's two. That's enough to fill the first glass. Now, after that, another one is going to overflow here and here. So half of that would go into the first glass and half of that would go into the second glass. And if we had three glasses poured, it would fill this, this, and this. If we had four glasses, it would fill this, it would fill this, and it would fill this, and we'd still have one extra glass left over. Half of that would overflow from here. Half of that would overflow from here. Now, where is it going to land? Well, half of that's being overflowed from here. So we can say 0.5 is overflowed from here. 0.5 is overflowed from here. Now, half of that 0.5 is going here. So this is like 0 0.25. And half of this is overflowing here. That's another 0 0.25. Same thing on this side. It's overflowing here. So 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. So with four glasses, we'd have full here, full here, full here, and a quarter full here, half full here, because you add these two up and a quarter filled here. Even understanding this is not trivial, is it? But obviously a picture helps a lot. So don't even start writing the code immediately. Don't even start thinking about algorithms. Don't think about the solution just yet. At least that's my advice. Just understand the problem. Understand the context. What are we working with? There's a lot of numbers here. How would we even simulate what's going on here? Like, is there a pattern that we're noticing now? What if I had more glasses? What if I had four more glasses below that? What if I had five glasses below that? What's the pattern here? How can we somehow compute how much is going to be in each glass? And I guess I should now get to what the problem is actually asking of us. We're given how much quantity is poured in terms of glasses. We're also given which row and which glass in that row do we care about. So in this case, we're given row one, which and this is zero indexed, by the way. So that means this row, the second row here and glass one, which I believe is this glass here. And all we want to know is how much liquid is in that individual glass, just that single query glass. So how can we determine? determine that this is such a unique problem that the first idea you're going to have is probably a simulation. And that's actually the correct one. I don't know if there are other ways to solve this problem. It doesn't really seem like it, but simulation is kind of going to be the first idea you have. But even if you have that idea, you might not be able to figure out the problem. So let's think about what's going on here. And this is a problem where like the perspective you have is going to make things easier for you. I'll kind of just tell you how I solved the problem my first time. I was thinking about it in terms of like a tree, like each of these is kind of like a node and the edges, the pattern that I noticed was all of the edges only have a single parent. They only have a single glass above them that's pouring directly into them. So for the edges, it's pretty simple. Just take half of your parent. And when we say half of the parent, we don't mean the quantity that's actually within the glass because that doesn't tell us how much the child is going to get. We care about how much actually went through that glass. Like we know for sure if we pour a hundred quantity of champagne, like a hundred glasses worth of champagne into the first glass, all of that is going through the first glass, like guaranteed. And then half of the extra from the first glass. So if there's a hundred poured here, minus one, because one glass is actually going to be saved here, like the extra 
is going to be 99. And that 99 is going to be distributed evenly between these two children glasses. So it would get 44.5 and 44.5 here as well. Now, how much extra is there? Well, we subtract one. So 43.5 extra for each of these two glasses, half of that is going to go here and half of that is going to go there. So when it comes to simulation, I thought about it in terms of for each of the children, just get half of the parents. So the edge here had half from this parent. Now the middle child here has two parents and that's always going to be the case. Everything that's not on the edge is going to have two parents. These two are both on the edge, so they just have a single parent. But this middle guy is going to get half of this parent and half of the par uh, parent here, at least the extra of each of the parents. And then this guy is only going to get half of their parent. But it's actually more simple to think about it in the reverse order, the actual direction that the champagne is being poured in. We just, for this guy, we say, how much is the extra? It's 99. Give half to the left child and give half to the right child. How do you determine the relationship of children? Like, how do you define that? That's kind of the hard part, at least initially, for this problem. But the best way to represent this is actually in terms of arrays. There's no need to think of it in terms of a tree because here the first array just has a single value, second array has two values, th third array has three values, and the relationship is always gonna be direct. Like we only care about an adjacent level. Like these two are adjacent, so we're only gonna be looking at these two. And these two are adjacent, we're only gonna be looking at these two. There's no need to store every single array in memory at the same time. We only only need at most two arrays in memory at the same time. And once you have that down, you can recognize that this is an array of size one. So we just put an index zero here. This is an array of size two. We have index zero and one. This is an array of size three. We put index zero, one, and two. Now the relationship from parent to the child is kind of simple like just mathematically, we know that zero has a child of zero and has a child of one. This zero also has a child of zero and a child of one. This one has a child of one and two. And if we draw the fourth level, we'll put a zero here, a one here, a two here, and a three here. And this zero, once again, has a child of zero and a child of one. One has a child of one and two. Two has a child of two and three. Now you tell me, do you notice a pattern here? Well, every single one is gonna have, like if I have an index i, the left child is gonna be index i and the right child is gonna be i plus one. So once you have that down and you recognize that going from parent to child is gonna be more simple than going from child to parent, you've pretty much solved this problem at least in terms of simulation. Now, what would the time complexity be if we're actually running a simulation? We would need to kind of compute the total amount of flow through every single glass, and that's gonna be relative to what the parameters are in the input. It's roughly going to be the query row squared, so let's just call that R, and then we square it, and the reason is because, let's say we're going up until we reach like the 10th row, for example. Well, the 10th row is gonna have 10 champagne glasses in it. And if we got to the 10th row, we went through 10 rows in total, even though a lot of them were smaller than that, we still kind of use the upper bound. So we say that the amount of like glasses we had to look at is roughly R squared. And same thing, well, not the same thing for the memory. The memory is going to be big O of R because we're only going to be keeping at most two rows in memory at a time. Okay, now let's code it up. Okay, so first I'm going to start with how we're going to loop over the rows. Like I'm going to think of it in terms of row in range query row plus one. And the plus one is because we want to actually get to this row. So like if this is five, then we want to actually go through six rows because this is zero indexed. So 
That's the idea behind this, but actually we can start with the first row, which I'm going to call previous row. And we already know how much is going to be poured into that row. These rows are going to represent the total flow in each glass in every single row. And we know the amount that's going to flow through the first glass is going to be the integer poured. That doesn't mean that's how much uh, champagne is actually in that glass. It just means that's how much has flowed through that glass. If we wanted to take the flow and convert it into how much actually is inside that glass, it would be really really, really easy because if the flow is greater than one, then the amount in that glass is going to be one. It can't be greater than that. And if it's less than one, then the flow is going to be equal to the amount in that glass. Now, if we're going to initialize the first row, we should probably skip it when we're doing our loop. So instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at one. And now I'm going to go and initialize our current row. It's going to be initially just all zeros. And what's going to be the size of this current row? It's going to be row plus one, because if we're at the zeroth row, that has a single glass. If we're at the first row, meaning index one, then that's going to have two glasses, et cetera, et cetera. Now, with that in mind, how many times are we going to loop for I in range of what? What are we looping over? We're trying to populate this array. So should we do row plus one? Should we have an iteration for every single row in the current row? Well, you could solve it that way, actually. And like I mentioned, that's actually how I solved it the first time. Let me quickly just copy and paste the code for that. Like this is the code for that solution and it works perfectly. The time complexity is the same, but there's a lot more logic when you're looking at it from the perspective of a child glass and then trying to get how much you can from the parent. You have to do a lot of computations. You can see some ternary operators and stuff like that. But if we think about it in terms of the parent to the child, then that's actually iterate this many times because that's how many glasses we're going to have in the previous row. And then let's just calculate for every glass in the previous row, how much extra is inside of this glass. So right now we're at previous row index I. How much extra is in this glass? This tells us how much flowed through that glass. And the extra is just going to be that minus one. And now the very, very simple thing that we do is we just check is the extra greater than zero? Was there actually extra? Because we don't want to deal with negative numbers here. If this is negative, then we know that there wasn't any extra. But if this is greater than zero, we have extra and that extra is going to be distributed evenly to each of the children. So for the current row at index I, we're going to add to it half of the extra. So 0.5 times extra. We're going to do the exact same thing for current row at index I plus one. And that's a lot more simple than the other thing I showed you, the other code where we kind of think about it from the reverse perspective. For what it's worth, that's the solution I came up with the first time. But when you actually look at the picture, this is definitely a much more simple approach that you can come up with. Now, once we're done populating the current row, let's assign it to the previous row for the next iteration of the loop. And then by the time we return, let's return previous row because we know that the previous row is going to be the same as the query row. And from that that row, we want uh, the query glass, which is the index from that row. Now, there's a problem here that you might have noticed. What if the value stored at this index is not the amount of liquid in that glass? It's the amount of flow in that glass. So what if this is greater than one? Well, we could have an if statement here, but the easier thing to do is just take the minimum of one and this because if this is greater than one, we're going to end up returning one. But if this is less than one, we're going to end up returning whatever value is stored here. And that's exactly what we want to do. So this is the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.